It's a gorgeous morning here in Northumberland today, so I'm going to make the most of it and I'm going to see if I can get some more panels on the roof up here above my head. So for this, we need to be outside the garage on the ladders. Let's get on with that. This will be another one of those views that you don't see very often. Right, so I'm going to try and get a panel in here, maybe one in there, and hopefully one in there. Right, well that's another two panels on. Hopefully, you can see all that clearly because the sun is out. So I can't get another one in here yet because I need to sort that bit of wall out. But I can spread them that way to the side of the garage. So let's go down, have a quick coffee and then get on with that. So I'll start to dress, stretch across. I now have one fully protected corner so it should be dry here for quite a while now. And I've just got to get those spaces filled in, get rid of that and then we can move on and do some more of the roof. So I'll have a bit of a tidy up so I can get rid of some of this old roof that's down here. So now it's drying out a bit. But before I do that, I just want to take the opportunity to say a quick thank you to all the new subscribers. We've had a whole bunch of you subscribing lately. Thank you for that. Hope you're enjoying all the content that's out there. If there's anything you want to know, any questions you've got, leave it in the comments below. And hopefully you can see this, but we've got the rest of the joists in there. They're in there. They're in that one. And they're in that one as well now. So that's all the joists in. And in the next video, hopefully, I'll get all this fresh air covered and get some panels on. I'm definitely going to need some more panels though. So I'll have to investigate that possibility. But we're getting there. Now as far as the damage to the roof's concerned, that was caused by a storm we had. It was be a year and a half, a couple of years ago now. It blew four panels off the back of the garage. And uh, when the insurance company came around to have a look at it, they turned around and said that it wasn't going to be covered due to lack of maintenance and wear and tear. But the strange thing was, the wear and tear and the lack of maintenance had happened at the front half of the garage, this bit here. So this is the kind of damage we're looking at. You can see how rotten the end of that joist is. And the worst one so far is that one there. I've got braced because it's uh, it's actually cracked and split in the middle. So that's being held up at the moment, but it's getting worse as time goes by. However, we're nearly down to uh, getting into that one, cutting the rotten bit off and replacing it. Now, I didn't build this garage. It was built by the previous owner of the property before I bought the property. As far as I can tell from talking to neighbours and friends who've lived in the area a lot longer than I have, the garage has been standing for possibly more than 40 years now, maybe closer to 50 years it's been standing for. So it's probably no surprise that uh, it's in the condition that it's in roof-wise. I think part of the problem is when you built the garage, you put that polythene on across the, the top of the joist. You put this uh, OSB board on, which might as well be made of Weetabix for all the, the use it is. And then he's covered it in sheets of polythene on top of that before putting the metal panels on over the top of that. Now the metal panels are uh, a box section, galvanized, corrugated steel sheets. They run the full length of the garage. So I think the full length is about, it's either 16 or 18 foot all the way across the garage. But then when he's put those on, for some reason, he's nailed them on. You can see the nails sticking through there. And then as well as that, having nailed them on and then punctured whatever waterproofing properties that the polythene may have had or may not have had at the time, he's then made it even worse by covering the inside of the roof in this lovely, it's actually blue plastic. And then he's painted that white over the top of it, effectively hiding what was going on inside the joists or inside the roof. Uh, he's created like a, a false ceiling, if you like. And it, it's there are parts of it that are filled with water. I don't know if you can see that split over there and that slight bulge is a puddle of water inside of there that's gonna to have to be got rid of as well. So when I first got the property, I had no idea that uh, the garage roof really wasn't waterproofed as much as it should have been. And it's probably been leaking and soaking water for years, certainly judging by the condition of those two joists up there. So the insurance company declining the claim, uh, it left it to me to sort the roof out myself. Now I did look, at a few professional places to get them to come out and put a, take the old roof off completely and put a whole new roof on a whole new roof on for me but the cost was way too prohibitive for the uh, the budget i had available at the time hence why this is a low budget stroke no budget way of uh, of putting the roof back together it's also helping though it's also proving that um by looking at things online and looking at other youtube videos from other areas you can actually learn to do an awful lot more than you think you can and you've just got to put yourself into the position of it needs to be done now i'm no builder i have no building experience at all and i've certainly got no information in my head with regards to putting a roof on but i have managed the good news is these three panels 
that I put on before Storm Babette hit were, uh, they've actually stayed on. They're no more loose now than they were previously. They're still all nice and solid in the way that they're on. Obviously there's uh, gonna be insulation to go on underneath those when it's all finished, but I wanna get the whole thing to be nice and dry first before I think of anything like insulation. Uh, there is a little bit of condensation that comes up on them now and then, but obviously we'll take care of that when uh, they're all treated properly and the insulation goes on fully. We'll have got a lot of work to do yet though. Um, there's the hole from the door over there, right the way back to here to take care of, but that's all can get done in the same way as the rest of it's been done. Hopefully though, a lot quicker this time around, now that I seem to have some idea of what I'm doing and how to put it right and how to fix all the damage we've had with it. Now these panels that I'm using are actually panels left over from the shed. They're actually left over from this shed. Now I got this one second hand and when I built it, it didn't quite fit. It wasn't, uh, it was longer than the space I wanted to put it in. So I had a few panels left over. What I am going to do when I get the roof done in the garage, I am going to take part of this down and connect the garage to the shed so I can just walk straight through. But that's where some of the spare panels are coming from. Now those panels are roughly six foot. I mean, that little short one at the front there, that's six foot long. The one that's standing up at the back, that's six foot three inches, six foot four inches, something like that. When they're all standing up straight next to each other. Now I was thinking originally, when I started putting the roof together and planning everything out, that it was going to take three panels to do the full stretch. Having had a quick look at it and measured it the other day though, it's actually going to be two full panels and then it's going to leave that corner section over there. So what I think I'm going to do is sacrifice a couple of panels and actually trim them down so I can put one piece from there to there and then a full panel going across the end of the garage. Obviously making sure that each panel overlaps the one that it goes on so it stops any water coming in next time it rains. And in case you're wondering how I'm going to repair that, what I'm going to do or what I will be doing, where that line is there, I'm going to cut upwards, take all of this bit out, and then replace it with the new bit. I'll join the two with a sister joint, I believe it's called, which is basically like that there. Uh, it's another bit of wood bolted through. I have got some grips in between the two bits of wood so that it can't move. And just to be on the safe side, I'm also putting a bit of a metal cradle on and uh, screwing or bolting that into it as well to hold everything level for when the new roof goes on. I know that one up there, doesn't look level at the minute but when you're up there it actually is level there's another bit of wood behind it that you can't see from this angle i think it uh, shows you it from there now i've got 12 pounds left in total so that'll give us enough to finish the back end of the garage here and get that all done out of the way but i am going to need some more metal panels therein lies a the problem at the minute the panels i'm using are 75 centimeters 76 centimeters wide the only actual flat panels i'll be able to find online anywhere are a lot shorter than that. They're, I think they're about 45 centimetres wide uh, in order to fit in with the way joists are built these days. Obviously with this garage being a hand-built one to a custom size by the previous owner, uh, what he's actually done, he hasn't made it a uniform space between the joists. Some of them are about two foot apart, some are two and a half foot apart, some of them aren't even two foot apart. So I'm having trouble in getting normal size panels when you go to buy them anywhere. So I think what I'm going to have to do and what will work out cheaper is to actually buy another shed and just use the panels that come with the shed. Uh, so I'm on the, in the market for either a return shed or a second-hand shed or something like that. Or if anybody's got any panels lying around that you're not using from a shed that you've had or if you're about to dismantle a shed, get in touch if you can. Local if you can, because obviously I don't want to be uh, traveling all the way from here to Southport or somewhere like that in order to pick up panels that I may be able to find a little bit closer at home. So if there's anyone in Northumberland, that's got a shed they don't want uh, or a shed they don't need or if you're, you're looking to get rid of a shed happy to buy some panels off you uh, leave a comment below and let us know if you've got any failing that i'll just uh, have a look around and see if i can buy another shed that'll give us the panels that i need the beauty of buying a full shed of course would mean that uh, i'll get a full all the skeleton frame of the shed and i'll be able to use that to extend the shed out a little bit that's behind the garage when i join the two together and have one big workshop that stretches the full length of the garden at least that's the plan. Hopefully it'll work that way. Now I've just moved over to a relatively dry spot in the garage because it's just started raining again, which is just what I needed because I was going to look at getting some more panels on today. So then, in the next video, we'll have more panels on. Hopefully we'll get all the panels on at the back half of the garage roof and we'll get all that done. And then there's a big clean-up to come after that and the dry-out whilst I organise what's, uh, what's going on with the rest of the roof and I try and shift all the stuff behind us here to the other end of the garage so it gives us the space 
to fiddle around and uh, wander around getting everything fixed up at this side of the garage and of course later on there's going to be electrics to be done as well but that's a, a flare off in the future for now all I want to do is get the roof on and make the thing watertight so I actually do some work in here. If you do want to support the channel and you want to help give us some amount of little bit of budget towards getting some more panels that I need or some more wood that I need, there's links below if you want a, a sticker from the channel um, or if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, there's links in the description below. On the back of that though, thanks for watching this one. Hopefully there'll be more action and activity in the next one and I'll see you then. Bye for now.